Hi guys, how's it going? My name's Helena and I'm back with another episode in this beginner stargazing series with Kielder Observatory. And in this video, we're going to help you decide which telescope is best for you. So to start off, what actually is a telescope? So a telescope is an instrument in simple terms that uses lenses to make objects that are far away appear closer. You can kind of think of it as a massive magnifying glass. Different people use telescopes for different reasons. For example, astronomers can use them to observe deep sky objects over a long period of time for scientific research. However, you don't have to use it for this at all. You can simply buy one and use it at home to enjoy the wonders of the night sky. Purchasing a telescope can actually be quite daunting with all the numbers, different information and specifications being thrown at you on the screen. So in this video, I'm going to break down the three main telescope specifications that you're going to have to look for when you're purchasing a telescope, what they are and why we need to think about them. The first specification that we have to think about when purchasing a telescope is focal length. And focal length can be seen as quite a large number measured in millimetres in the specifications of a telescope. And it basically is the measurement from the primary mirror or lens inside a telescope to the focus point. The bigger this number, the more zoomed in the objects are going to be and they're going to appear closer to you. And the smaller this number, the wider the objects are going to be and they're going to appear farther away. Okay, that was focal length. So the next one is aperture. An aperture can be seen as the smaller number measured in millimetres in telescope specifications. Aperture is the measurement of the primary mirror or lens inside the telescope. Basically the part which light hits for you to be able to see it. So, simply, the bigger the aperture, the more light the telescope is going to capture and the brighter the objects that you see are going to appear and in more detail. The third and final spec today that we're going to be thinking about when choosing a telescope is f-stop. And f-stop refers to how fast the telescope actually captures the light. f-stop can be calculated by dividing the focal length of a telescope with the aperture of a telescope. And one thing to bear in mind with it is the larger the f-stop, the larger the telescope's going to be. So you may want to think about this when it comes to portability and transportation. Now, that is a lot of information that I've chucked at you and to get your head around, but the best way to understand it is to put it into practice. So let's go look at some telescopes. <laughs> different telescopes are good for observing different things. So large aperture, easy to use telescopes, much like what we're seeing on the screen here in this Skywatcher telescope from First Light Optics. These telescopes are typically good at making the object brighter due to their large aperture and therefore easier to see and really good for observational astronomy. So we're going to be going through three very different types of telescopes and putting the theory that we learned and talked about previously into practice when analysing telescope specifications. So we're going to check out the name of this particular telescope first. So Skywatcher is the name of the manufacturer. They bring out lots of different types of telescopes and are a really leading telescope manufacturer in the field. And Heritage is the series that they've produced to these telescopes. So there's going to be different sizes of this same model. So ones with larger apertures and larger focal lengths and smaller apertures and smaller focal lengths. We're going to come back to 150. FlexTube is the type of telescope that it is. You can see through this structure that the telescope retracts down to practically half its size, which is ideal for transporting it and storing it when it's not being used. And Dobsonian is just a specific type of reflector telescope. Now coming back to 150, 150 is the size of the aperture of this telescope. So going back to what we were talking about previously, this is the diameter of the primary mirror inside this instrument. This is what makes it so good for observational astronomy as it means that more light is hitting this mirror which therefore means that the objects are going to appear brighter. Let's click on the specifications tab of this telescope. This takes you to all of the information about the actual telescope that you're purchasing and we've just spoken about the diameter of the primary mirror that's also known as the aperture 
at 150 millimeters. The telescope focal length sits at 750 millimeters. So again, that's the distance from the primary mirror in the telescope to the focus point. And this is a really nice sort of central focal length. It's not too zoomed in, it's not too zoomed out. And you can use eyepieces to make up for this and magnify things even further. An F5, that's referring to the speed of the telescope and anything typically between F4 and F6 is considered quite a fast telescope and anything up from seven is considered a slower telescope. Shift one to do working days, people. I'm just saying. If you're wanting to observe the moon and the planets and deep space objects, a Maxitov telescope may be your best bet. So again, coming over to the name, we have Skywatcher, the name of the manufacturer. Skymax is the name of the series that these telescopes are in, so you can get bigger and smaller versions. And 102 refers to the aperture, so the diameter of the primary mirror in the telescope is 102 millimeters, which is really, really good. Let's click on product description this time, and you can see a stark difference between this and the last one. Let's go over to the focal length first. So 1,300 millimeters. That is a really high magnification telescope and it's even bigger than some of the Dobsonians that I've used. So ideal for looking at small objects such as planets. And it even says here at the top what it's best for and what it's made for. It has a fantastic focal ratio of f12.74. A higher focal ratio can tell you a lot about a telescope, much like a higher focal length can. And this basically means that it's gonna have higher magnification with any given eyepiece and a narrower field of view. So more zoomed into objects like the moon and planets, etc. And the aperture, the diameter of the primary mirror, again, as we spoke about before, is 102 millimeters, which has massive light gathering power potential. The magnification you can reach with the eyepieces supplied is 130. That's not its full potential. That is what you get in the box. That is unreal. That is fantastic. All in all, fantastic telescope, really portable and a really good size. Very much for the people that are wanting a really nice close up view of planets such as Jupiter and Saturn and the moon and bright deep sky objects such as the Orion Nebula and the Andromeda Galaxy. Shipping in one, two working days, I'm just, I'm just saying. The third and final telescope, the suspense. <laughs> the third and final telescope we're gonna talk about is the Celestron Star Sense Explorer. This is a telescope that I'd recommend to families, groups of friends, or kids going out under the night sky that are wanting to get the full experience and enjoyment out of it but also the ease of use with the telescope and not having the frustration of setting it up so much as the others. The great thing about the StarSense telescope is you can connect it to your phone, which makes it really easy to find objects in the night sky as using the dedicated Celestron StarSense app, it can show you a guided tour of the sky and show you exactly where things are through arrows and pointing you in the right direction. Let's take a quick look at the specifications of this telescope. So the difference between this one and the last two is it's a refracting telescope and not a reflecting telescope. This simply means that it uses lenses inside the body instead of mirrors to bring the light to a focal point. It has a 70 millimeter aperture, as we can see from the name here, but to find out more, we can click on product description and scroll down to the features. It's got a focal length of 700 millimeters, much similar to the Skywatcher Heritage 150p, and it's got a focal ratio of F10. The potential that it has to reach with the eyepieces in the box is 70 times magnification. That is amazing for this little telescope. Shipped in one to two working days. I'm sorry, I did it with the others. I had to do it with this one. It was only fair. You don't always have to use telescopes to see things close up though. So for example, if you've already done photography and you've got access to cameras and lenses, you can see the moon close up with a camera and a lens, say between 250 and 600 millimeters in focal length. So for this situation, think about the camera lens being the telescope and the back of the LCD screen on the camera being the eyepiece. It's the same principles put into different practical situations. But throughout all of these experiences, I've had a number one favourite scope that has stayed with me throughout everything. And I really want to recommend it to you guys today. 
You may have heard me mention it a little bit earlier in the video, but my number one favourite telescope for visual observation, as I can only recommend ones that I've used myself, is the Skywatcher 250p Classic 10 inch Dobsonian. The one reason I love this telescope so much is because it's as if they've specifically designed a proper full on beginner's package all in one. You don't need anything else when you purchase this kit. It comes with a wide range of eyepieces ready for you to look at anything from the Moon to the Andromeda Galaxy to Jupiter and Saturn. The telescope comes with everything that you need on hand to use it. However, there is one piece of equipment that I purchased aside from the telescope, which I'd really recommend that you look into, and that is any eyepiece from the Celestron XL LX range. I remember when I put this eyepiece on this exact telescope during the event of Jupiter's opposition, and I could clearly see Jupiter and its four closest moons Io, Ganymede, Callisto and Europa. It was an unforgettable experience, but I wouldn't have had that little bit more magnification and clarity without this lens series, so I really thought I'd like to recommend it to you guys today. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and you found it helpful, but most importantly, I really hope your shopping cart's full in an online telescope store with a telescope that you've seen in today's video. I am not in the least bit sorry. I hope to see you back here very soon for another beginner-related video on stargazing and getting you excited about the night sky. Until then, my name's been Helena, this has been Kaylor Observatory. Clear skies.